In the last video, we looked at the probabilities of unigrams and bigrams, and at the conditional probability of one word given that we had already seen a word before it. So essentially the probability of a bigram. In this video, we're going to combine those probabilities to calculate the probability of a sequence of words, of a sentence. And throughout the week, we're going to use that, those probabilities to distinguish between um, English sentences that we hear all the time, between sentences that are poorly formed and the computer should not use them, and forms that are unusual but that we have heard before, such as all your base are belong to us. What we are trying to design is a language model, is some kind of computer structure that can duplicate the intuitions that humans have. For example, at the beginning of the week, we looked at structures like, it's like we finish each other's sentences or sandwiches. Humans can estimate that these are relatively probable sentences and that something like, it's like we finish each other's desks is a very unlikely sentence. We are trying to build a mathematical structure that can tell us that it's like we finish each other's sentences is highly probable and it's like we finish each other's desks is very improbable and unlikely. A system that can capture human intuitions about language is a language model. And this language model, an n-gram model, can calculate the probability of sequences of words or sequences of characters. And in particular, the probability of some upcoming word given the words that have happened before. It's like we finish each other's, and then what's gonna happen? Is it sentences? Is it desks? The computer is gonna be able to tell us. And in doing so, it'll replicate a capability that humans have with language. So we want to estimate the probability of sentences like, I would like to swim in the river, which is a perfectly fine English sentence. But if you have a corpus of say 10 million words, it might be the case that you never find this exact sentence, I would like to swim in the river. Therefore, if you never find it, the probability would be zero because the computer never saw that exact sequence. And this estimation would be wrong because that sequence of words is a very good sequence in English. It's a, it's a perfectly fine sentence. So we want to approximate the probability of this sequence, even if we don't ever see the exact sequence in a corpus. And use the corpus structure to derive that this is a good English uh, sentence. The way we do this is by decomposing the probability of the sequence into the probability of its adjacent elements, of its bigrams. And this was an insight of Andrei Markov from Markov Chains. So this whole sequence, I would like to swim in the river, can be decomposed into the probability of the beginning of a sentence, I'm sorry, the probability of I given the beginning of a sentence, so beginning I, multiplied by the probability of would given I, multiplied by the probability of like given would, multiplied by the probability of two given like, and so forth until multiplied by the probability of the end of a sentence given river. So this multiplication of the sequences of objects is going to be an approximation of the probability of the entire sequence. Here we have a very small example. Let's imagine we have a corpus with just three sentences. I am Sam, Sam I am, I do not like green eggs and ham. And the beginning and the end of the sentences for each of these three sentences. So all our model knows about English is those three sentences. From that, let's calculate the probability of some of the bigrams. For example, we have the probability of I given the start of a sentence. This would be, um, the number for this would be the count of how many times we see the bigram uh, beginning of the sentence I divided by how many times we see the unigram beginning of a sentence. So the bigram beginning of a sentence I happens once 
in the first sentence and then in the third sentence when we have beginning I do not so start of a sentence I happens two times and then how many times we see beginning of the sentence it happens three times so 2 divided by 3 equals 0 0.67 approximately 0 0.67 this is the probability of I given the start of the sentence and notice how this number captures the intuition of what we saw in the previous video if you're standing on the beginning of the sentence what will happen next in the first sentence you go to I in the second sentence you go from the beginning to Sam in the third sentence you go from the beginning to I again so if you're standing on the beginning of the sentence two out of three you're gonna go to I in sentence one and three and one time out of three you're gonna go into Sam in sentence two so when you're standing on the beginning of the sentence two out of three times you're gonna go into I which is the exact number that we're getting here what about the probability of Sam given M it's the probability of the sequence M Sam divided by the probability of the unigram M so the sequence M Sam is once in sentence one and that's it one time and then how many times do we see the unigram unigram M we see it once twice in sentences one and two so one divided by two equals 0 0.5 again the intuition is that if I'm standing on M what's going to happen next if I'm standing on M one of the times I'm going to go into Sam and the other time I'm going to go into the end of a sentence so if I'm standing on M one out of two times I'm going to go into Sam this is the probability that we get now you go ahead and give it a try this is the generalized form the probability of the element B given a is the count of the bigram a B divided by the unigram a by how many times we see the unigram a now use this general formula to calculate the probability of these two bigrams of the end of a sentence given Sam and of the word do given I you can use this formula and then you can come back to see the result so go ahead and pause the video welcome back the probability of the end of a sentence given Sam is the probability of the sequence Sam end of the sentence divided by the probability of the unigram Sam so Sam end of sentence happens once in sentence one and then the unigram Sam happens one two times so this is one divided by two 50 percent and again if you're standing on Sam what happens then you can go into end of the sentence in the first sentence or you can go into the word I in the second sentence so if you're standing on Sam 50% of the times you go into end of sentence 50% of the times you go into and 50 um, into I I'm sorry 50% the probability of do given I is the probability of the sequence I do divided by the probability of the unigram I you see I do one time in the three sentences and then the unigram happens once in the three sentences so one divided by three 0 0.33 again this is because when I am on am I'm sorry on I in the first sentence I go into M in the second sentence I go into M and the third sentence I go into do so if I'm standing on the word I two out of three times I go into M and one out of three times I go into do 0 0.33 what we are doing here is that we're estimating the probability of a sequence given the observations that we have given this huge corpus of three sentences the name the general name of this technique is maximum likelihood estimation in that we're given the maximum likelihood uh, that we're going to see some event and the sentence given Sam 
We present these numbers between 0 and 1 so that we can use them as probabilities, which is why we divide by the count of the unigram. We call this a normalized maximum likelihood estimation, so that all of our counts are in, all of our probabilities, I'm sorry, are in between 0 and 1. So, this is another one that I want you to try. Let's say we have the sentence, I am Sam, which is the beginning of a sentence, I am Sam, end of a sentence. From the chain of probabilities, we know that this is the probability of I, given the start of a sentence, of am, given I, of Sam, given am, and of the end of the sentence, given Sam. So, three of these probabilities are in the previous slides, one of them you're going to have to calculate. Please calculate the probability of this whole sequence. And I'm going to give you a moment to pause the video and then come back for the result. Welcome back. The probability is 0 0.67 by 0 0.67, which is the one that you have to calculate, um, which if you remember, if you're an I, two times you go into M, one time you go into do, then the probability of Sam given M and the probability of the stop given Sam. The probability of the sentence I am Sam is 11%, 0 0.11. How about a sentence that doesn't mean anything, like I am Fuff? This would be the beginning of the sentence, I am Fuff, end of the sentence. We have the first two probabilities, but we do not have the sequence am fuff in anywhere in the model. And in any case, it would be a bad uh, sentence of English because it would not mean anything. So the probability of am fuff is zero because we never observe the sequence am fuff. This makes the whole multiplication zero. So by having these numbers, the model that we've devised, the n-gram model, can tell you that there are sentences like I am Sam, which have a higher probability and are therefore more preferable than sentences like I am Fuff that have a lower probability. In summary, we can describe the probability of a sentence of a sequence of words using the probability of its sub n grams. Here we used bigrams and we multiply the sequences of the bigrams, the conditional probabilities, to form a chain of probability that will describe the sentence. We can use these probabilities to figure out if a combination of, is possible, such as I am Sam, and it will help us find sentences that are good, but also ones that are nonsensical or ungrammatical, like I am Fuff, or um, Fuff am I, for example. In the next couple of videos, we're going to see an example of these techniques with more sentences and a way to distinguish between good sentences, bad sentences, and sentences that are unusual but that should still be admissible. This is going to be called smoothing.